test. See, they they take things and then and then that's why they call people that blow up the Pentagon extremist. And then when you protest big government, they call that extremist. The brain picks it up both ways. You understand? It's a way to call you a terrorist without calling you a terrorist. But now they just call you a terrorist. Protesting's terrorism. So they said we're holding him, or and and, and we want him held till the DNC's over at the local jail. That's the feds saying, hold him in a jail. See, that's the new NDAA being being uh, rolled out against us nationwide now. That's what's going on is we're just getting used to, as I told you, at the airport and then at highway checkpoints, you're gonna be on a list. No judge, no jury, done nothing wrong, and it's a pickup list and you disappear. But see, this time, the lawyers got involved and got him out. But see, this is what they're doing. They're just racing ahead with the disappearance. Then once people know people are disappearing, they won't be picked up by the police. That will then cause violent confrontations. Then the civil war starts. All of it is planned. All of it is prepared. They have a giant NSA base in San Antonio that when the local newspaper, because I've seen the local newspaper, San Antonio Express News, and the local weekly, I forget the name of it, go out. You know, they all have flip phone cameras, cell phone cameras. They'll be at the Walmart parking lot next to a giant complex, you know, the size of a military base. I mean, uh, and, and, and guys show up off their jurisdiction going, turn your cameras off. I've decided I'm going to go down there and film it because everybody knows the NSA's down there. Don't sit there and spy on me illegally and do all this and then, and then have guys in black uniforms try to intimidate me like I did something wrong. You are hiding because you're criminals listening to our cell phones, grabbing everything off our internet, and you say you're doing it to fight Al-Qaeda. Boom! You run Al-Qaeda and everybody knows it. You run Al-Qaeda, you run Al-Qaeda, you run stinking Al-Qaeda, you love Al-Qaeda, you created Al-Qaeda, you work for the foreign banks that took this country over. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all of it. I'm tired of it, it's a joke. I got big stacks of articles I've read where they're handing over everything to Al-Qaeda to just murder the Christians, Jews, uh, Muslim groups they don't like, the Shiites. And then, and then I'm gonna be lectured about, oh, we gotta stick our hands down your pants because of Al-Qaeda. And now they're like, well, it's not Al-Qaeda now. It's the conservatives and libertarians. They're the new terror threat. I told you a decade ago that was coming. This was always set up to take over America. I've got one of these big UN chiefs I've got these UN chiefs, uh, Asian minister, global UN police force to enforce world government dictates. That's a article at Infowars.com. And it just goes on and on and on. Kurt Nemo's got an article out where the West is planning to blow up the infrastructure of Iran, including their power grid. And they're gonna deindustrialize that country. Just like they've got Agenda 21 deindustrializing us. Don't you get it? It doesn't matter who the leaders are of the Iranians or who the leaders are of any country. Everybody's being deindustrialized but China. China's the new New World Order command base because they'll execute their people, they'll euthanize them, they'll one-child policy, they've accepted the world government. They raise their kids in government dormitories in many areas, they're ending the family, they're doing open-air genetic engineering, they've got cows already producing human milk, they've got human animal chimera clones. They are the new command base. They get three new plants, we get none a week. Three new plants a week. It, it's total shutdown. They can bomb their power plants. Well, they just have environmentalists shut ours down. This is a deindustrialization, diabolical takeover where only the high tech corporate and government reservations are going to have technology and advanced medical systems. We're having everything cut off. The process of de evolution and de development has begun as Maury Strong swore they would. And man, when I get some cop into authority bugging their eyes out at me, I'm beyond getting mad at you. You are a pathetic mind control zombie sitting there in their little little kid dress up role, messing with someone who is light years advanced from where you're at. And I talk to the police because you're the ones that they're gonna try to use to enforce all this. You're the ones that in the next phase are gonna be absolutely fed into a meat grinder. And I wish you'd wake up because that's one of the hopes we've got. <sighs> How much of it's coming true? It's all starting to come true, folks. You gonna listen to me? You think it's fun to risk my life? You think it's fun I get chills every minute? I know the position I'm in. You think it's fun to be changing history? You think it's fun to be a real contender? 
It's real is what it is. It isn't a game. Do you understand that? It isn't a game. The chem weapons in your water isn't a game. The bioweapons in your food isn't a game. What's going on around this isn't a game. It isn't a damn game. It's real, and it's for all the marbles. I will not sit here idly by while a bunch of psychopaths set up a scientific dictatorship and try to put us into an arrested development system so they can orderly kill us like fish in a barrel. I'm a human being, and I see the program, and I'm awakening others to resist it. I have now covered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stacks partially of the news. Just one of these articles I read this morning by Kurt Linderman was like, just so humiliating and painful for humanity. It's how they're giving kids, little kids abortions without even telling their parents, how they're giving them vaccines all over the country without telling their parents with links to all the news, reporting it like it's a great thing. People being arrested for what they write in school essays, three-year-olds that aren't allowed to use their name, Hunter, because hunting's bad. And, you know, because when I saw this article, I knew I, that as soon as I saw an article about a deaf preschooler in Nebraska told to change his name, I saw that last Friday in the Examiner, I knew that I would say, hey, I bet there's a trend to not have the name Hunter. And sure enough, found it because hunting's bad. They're telling Dick Ferris, don't name your kid Hunter. I mean, these people are a bunch of hen pecking control freaks, and I've had enough of them. These armies of these soft, stupid, dumb people that are so weak. They want to boss strong people around. Let me tell you something, folks. When you're strong, you don't like bossing people around. You only do it if it's an absolute necessity. That's why I'm so sick of guys. It's a constant torture that really think they're tough. Let me tell you something. Really tough guys are real polite and real nice because they don't want to get in a fight. A, because they know they might kill you, but B, they know they might run into somebody like them. Somebody who's been in a lot of fights actually knows what it's really like. It's always these soft nobodies. I've even analyzed, I've seen some of these guys start fights with people and later I'll ask them, hey, you been in a lot of fights? Oh yeah, I've been in a couple. Really? You ever been in the hospital before? You ever put somebody in the hospital? You ever had your teeth knocked out? You ever had arms and legs broken? And, 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 and again, they're not in the real world. It, it's like they're about 12 years old, but they're 30. And they just have not lived yet. They have not experienced things yet. I watch these cops in these videos. And we don't even play here on air most of the time. I mean, I could demonize police to the end of the world if I wanted to. But it, it, that only helps the psych warfare compact them more into their, into their uh, arrested development and their, and their gang mentality that it's us against them. But I mean, you'll watch them where somebody's doing nothing and they kick them in the throat. And then you, you think, well, maybe they caught him raping a woman. You know, maybe they were just mad at him. And then the case comes out and they've done nothing. They pulled him over. They hadn't even smarted off to him. Just a, it's, it, it's a sadist wants to kick somebody in the throat. Or, you know, body slam a woman for no reason. I mean, one thing, if you've been on the force 10 years and were having a bad day and somebody got in your face and pushed you so you beat them over the head, that'd be bad. But it wouldn't be like, oh, put them in jail. You know, somebody did something to you, but like stomping on somebody's head and then charging them with assaulting you because they raised their hand, it's so cowardly. It's so pathetic. I'm ashamed for you. It's not even that I hate you. I just think of what type of weirdo wimp are you? And then I think about what it must be like to be in your family. Just the nature of government and how do you have a good country with a good police force, which are rare, versus what most nations are like with a bunch of out of control goons, street gangs in uniforms, running around abusing people. But generally it's because the people are, are a reflection of their police. If you have an upright, strong, but also genteel society, the police are gonna be well behaved and you're gonna have a culture where being honorable and being intelligent and going after real bad guys like a bloodhound and those people are honored. Because when you've got good peace officers, they are a treasure. That's why I, it, to see our system taken over and turned into evil and it, to see it become the opposite is painful because it can be such a good thing. And it is so pathetic to see what it's turned into and that the police are now being made our enemies. And they are like hogs to a slaughter. And I tell you, I've been watching the globalists engage in all their criminal activities 
And I tell you, I'm here to wage war on it with the most powerful weapon in history, and that is the pen, that is the mouth. And when you load that weapon with the truth, it is a powerful, dynamic duo. Yes, it's teleprompter-free radio, simulcasted three-hour TV transmission right here at prisonplanet.tv. We're streaming the video. And, of course, uh, we also blast out on XM 166. And we also go out on over 115 AM and FM affiliates across the United States. It is so important for listeners to, A, spread the word about your local AM and FM stations. I mean, stop in your car at the red light saying, hey, tune in to it. Uh, to, if you're a business, sponsoring my show or other shows uh, on the station and letting them know. Or if you're a listener supporting the sponsors and letting them know why. You support those AM and FM stations because, yes, it shows how much of the New World Order's come out in the open that I'm now more and more accepted. I'm, I'm a mainstream media source now. I see it all over the news. They use our reports now. Uh, and that's because so much of this stuff has actually now been proven and is now out in the open. And the Drudge Report also helped uh, mainline our message and has been incalculably uh, helpful. So we thank Matt Drudge and his crew for their bravery on that front. But, you know, uh, also Coast to Coast AM over the years, you, George Nori, you get to this point where everybody kind of realizes, whoa, this stuff is real. This tech, technotronic, uh, neo-feudal, hyper-technocracy is real. Uh, we are being colonized by the New World Order. In fact, uh, remind me, uh, guys, make me do a brief review. I wrote a bunch of notes. I went and saw Obama 2016 uh, on uh, Saturday. Uh, my wife and I and uh, my good buddy Shane Steiner, we're getting ready to do the gun show again, folks. We've just been getting a bunch of other projects done. We went out and saw it, Obama 2016, and it was true to a level. So it wasn't lying. It just didn't take you to the higher level uh, of the knowledge. So I want to ask the crew to please remind me at the uh, start of the second segment next hour uh, for me to do a, a, a brief review of that. I want to do a big official review with documents and show people examples with quotes and things uh, of what's going on with Obama 2016. Uh, we're going to take calls in this hour on the reports uh, that the uh, we've been telling you about for a year, but now the media is finally picking up on it because it's going in nationwide. And then there's video surfacing of you walk out of a Whataburger or you walk out of a Starbucks or you walk out of a Salt Lick here in Austin at the Austin Berkshire International Airport, all airports, and the TSA comes over and says, we're going to stick a sampler, an explosives tester in your drink. And they were asked about it a few months ago. They said, well, we just want to be random. No, it's not random. It's about getting in your space and dominating you and, and creating the idea that you're all suspects. Because, see, they're now moving from Al-Qaeda. Oh, we don't profile. We just watch you get a Starbucks coffee that we know there isn't explosives in and do it because it's nonsensical. In military psychology, the Prussians developed this. They would have troops in boot camp near the end do really silly, stupid stuff. Sing stupid songs, say stupid things. Uh, I'm not going to say some of the sexual stuff. Some of the more advanced units would be told to do. And it was mainly, will you do it? Will you do what you're told? Because they have to set the precedent to take your three-year-old behind closed doors with a fat guy with a mustache, you know, takes your daughter away while they cry. I mean, you've got to be learned, pull up to a police checkpoint, give a blood sample. you got to let them grab your wife's breast. they got to get in your space. And they're now at highway checkpoints, malls, uh, proms, just, just everywhere. The, the sky is opened, and uh, people that have taken a one-week course if they it, if it take another, the eighth day, you know, God rested on the seventh day. Well, on the eighth day, Janet Napolitano, big sis, has them take an eight-hour course. Well, there's a lunch, so it's seven hours, where they learn how to read minds. Funny, I thought you had to have it like a super up there in lights IQ, to be able to read facial expressions and have cultural icons and really be able to break down type groups and how someone speaks and their linguistics and their bone structures and everything that only an idiot savant could have to be able to actually know who somebody is. You think these people in seven hours learn how to do that? No. There's very few people. They're called super detectives in history. And you ain't it.